Um, I, I just want to say first how thrilled I am to be here. And I have to tell you, if you know, four years ago you told me I'd be leading an environmental organization, I would have called you a liar. I would have said environmentalists care about trees and they care about rocks, but we care about people. And it's about real humans. And I didn't understand that there could be people who thought not only about the people that lived on the planet, but about what was happening to the planet. And, 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 I think that's so and so now what this moment presents is an opportunity for us to watch the investment in and the investment in this great economy. And to also now be thinking about how to provide training and infrastructure so that people have a career path out of poverty. And for us, it happens a couple of ways. One is that we have got to be clear that we cannot compromise the environmental movement and environmental quality any more than we can compromise worker standards. Right? But those two have to be clear. And the reason I'm in San Diego is because San Diego is one of the places that is ripe for opportunity. And the reason it's right for opportunity is because what the Obama administration has said is we believe the green economy can move us out of this recession. We believe that it can be a model of equity. We believe that it can be a model that actually shows us how to stop environmental degradation, but how to also improve quality and worker standards. And what I know about San Diego, I know that you've been working on lead certification. I know about the MAC Projects Initiative to weatherize thousands of homes. And I know that the IBW here has been trying to figure out working on solar and thinking about standards and quality and training. And if there is any community that is right for the almost $100 million that you will get here, it's this community. There's money coming that has to be spent in the next nine months. Five million dollars will be spent in nine months. Now, that money is critical, but what's more important that you know about is the additional money that they're getting ready for. First is the energy bill that's being debated. Now, when we talk about things like cap and trade, most people's eyes glaze over. And they're thinking about how they're going to make sure they have dinner on the table, pay the mortgage, make sure the kids go to school, and we haven't done a good job of translating what cap and trade means to them and their families. But our common obligation is to talk about it, not just in terms of what it means economically, but what it means for this planet. And so, how much money do you think is going to get spent on energy alone? Just guess. A over a trillion dollars. They want that debate to be done by Memorial Day. What happens after the energy bill? The budget process. How much money do you think is going to come through the budget process? None. <laughs> unfortunately, or fortunately for us, that's not true. After the energy bill, the budget process, then comes the transportation reauthorization. And so what that means is in the next year alone, almost five trillion dollars will be spent investing in the green economy. So here's what we're doing at Green for All. Our first thing we're doing is paying attention to what's going on at federal level. Because unfortunately, I discovered, you know, coming from the labor movement, that there is a lot happening and not a lot of people paying attention. And what's most critical is essentially there's a group of people who always cared about the environment. They are righteous. They're doing the right things. I'm glad to have our partners, I think, here at the Sierra Club and others. The challenge, though, is to make the kind of change we want, we have to be able to add to the Sierra Club to win. And our mission at Green for All is to figure out how do we add in the labor movement, how do we add in people of color and working people and justice movements? Because the only way we can win is if a whole new group of people come to the table. So when we look at things like in federally what's happening, the reason we have to be advocates for end users is because climate doesn't just get to be one person's issue. Climate is not owned by the Sierra Club. Though there are advocates and friends, it's because they're saying this community is about all of us. This is something that matters to all of us. 
And part of what we've done is, is at a federal level is to have a partnership called the Climate Equity Alliance. And the Climate Equity Alliance is a partnership with us, SEIU, um, Building Trades, um, the NAACP, the Council of Churches, um, Catholic Church, and many others. And the reason that we have that partnership is so that we can say equity and climate are issues that should be together. And we have an obligation to address them, and we are the advocates for the end users. Cole isn't the advocate for the end users. BP, who says they're doing lots of great jobs, is not the advocate for end users. We are the advocates for end users. So a green for all, that's our mission. So that's what we're doing at a federal level. And so part of what we have to think about when we think about green jobs is how to make it real at a local level. I know there's work here happening to do that. And part of why I wanted to be here is because we think San Diego is a place that should be a model for a green economy. And, and I want to make sure more And let me tell you what you have in place so you know you have a cheerleader in me. And I want you to know, I feel like I get to just come in and tell you, you've got it. Um, but you have a labor movement that's strong. You have a strong environmental movement that's ready to be your partners and make a quality environment here in San Diego. You have a strong faith community. I know I saw someone from Pico is here. And you have a community that's really ready to join you in making this a place that has standards. So you think about, are they union jobs? Are they quality jobs? Is there a pathway out of poverty? Because, right, it doesn't count as a green job if you're sweeping a broom, making minimum wage in a clean and green facility. There is a huge opportunity, and this is a moment that every movement waits for. The administration believes in this economy. They, they you know, we, we joke that this isn't the first black president, it's the first green president. <laughs> Deserves to have a better life. Everyone. 